What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive for COVID or some other virus, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for that Wednesday edition of the Virus Update for Wednesday, October 23rd, 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome to today's Virus Update. Welcome to my channel. This is where we talk about all those viruses that could make you sick, including the COVID virus. COVID started back in 2020, though some people did uh, get sick in 2019, late 2019, before it really started becoming a big thing in early 2020. And guess what? Here in 2024, it is still a thing. People are still being infected, and people are still getting long COVID, hospitalization, and even dying of COVID. So you need to be informed with what's going on because you don't hear much about these viruses on the news and you don't hear much from the government at all. Why would you, especially in the United States? It's an election year. That's one of the big reasons why. And the other reason is, well, if they start talking about these viruses more, no one's going to take it serious and the economy might take a hit. Yeah, you get the idea. Anywho, if you are new to my channel, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, hit that thumbs up button. The more people that hit that like button, the more YouTube is going to share this content. And of course, leave your comments down below. Alrighty, we do have a few news stories today. Then we're going to take a look at some daily data. We will take a look at a few wastewater sites, a few COVID positivity rates from some states on Walgreens, and we are going to take a look at some weekly totals as well when it comes to COVID numbers. Starting off, though, with some H5N1 news that just came in within the last couple of hours, and that is California adds yet again more H5N1 cases. Yes, this is now taking the total up to 15. And if you recall, let's go back here. If you recall, there were cases in Washington back over the weekend as well. There was a rare Sunday news drop on H5N1, which uh, I don't remember there ever being before, but four cases in Washington of H5N1 bird flu back over the weekend. So, yeah, this is an evolving situation, like I've been saying, and it just continues to unfold as time goes on. All right, moving on to our next story, Justin Timberlake. He's dealing with some sort of an illness. He has had to reschedule not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six shows. So, yes, that's something we really uh, need to keep an eye on. That's, I mean, that's quite a few shows, if you ask me. Now, I don't know if they were all lined up in a row. You know, they do one show one day and then the next and the next, or it's spread over a couple of weeks. But uh, to have to reschedule six shows, that sounds pretty serious to me. All right, you may have seen this on the news by now. Shortly after yesterday's virus update, this news came out. E. coli outbreak linked to McDonald's quarter pounders in multiple states. Yeah, at least 49 people in 10 states have been sickened. One person has died, and it looks like Colorado is the one that is the state that's doing the worst. And the person that did die was an elderly person. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's bad enough McDonald's food can cause heart disease, diabetes. Eating a lot of McDonald's is not good for you, but now it could potentially cause E. coli, at least in some places. Hopefully they get this contained relatively quick, and some menu items have been removed as a result of that. All right, in Toronto, Canada, this is really uh, interesting, a major Toronto hospital network reinstates masking requirements. Yes, University Health Network is masking, or is making mask mandatory as respiratory illness season ramps up. I think this should just, you know, I think it should just be a standard. Just a really a universal standard worldwide. If you have to use healthcare, when you go into healthcare, you put on a mask, you wear the mask, you do it while you're receiving your health care, and then when you're done, you know, if you show so should want to take it off, you take off the mask. It's just something that is so simple to do, yet so little number of people actually do it. And I, it's just totally ridiculous that more people don't want a mask in healthcare. Why would you want to, 
spread disease or catch a disease when going to healthcare. Let's make healthcare safe. Masking and ventilation really needs to be done in healthcare. In fact, masking works so much that I actually have a section on my website, datareport.info, uh, in the COVID arc studies archives that actually shows studies on masking. And there's up to 15 now that all state, hey, masking is safe and effective and it is a good way of preventing disease especially COVID. Something that's new to the COVID study archives is this COVID's impact on the immune system. How many people can raise their hand and say they have seen on social media actually made a, a post about this last night. How many people can say they have seen on social media where uh, someone says Oh, we're constantly getting sick. Oh, my child brought in a bug from school and, oh, it's just, oh, so bad. What's going on? Ask them this. Have they had a COVID infection? Have they? Those who have had a COVID infection, even if it's just mild and asymptomatic, it can go on to damage your immune system. Yes, COVID, the virus itself, can go on to damage your immune system. And I did make a section now for COVID's impact on the immune system. And currently there are just eight studies here. As I find more, I will add more as more come out. I will add more and you can see here, some of these uh, studies are over 200 views, which means, yeah, people are taking an interest. And now mind you, some of these studies I posted going back to last year and even in 2022 when I first started the site. But yeah, I think um, the point is clear. It's becoming more and more clear. COVID can wreak havoc on your immune system. And that is something that uh, we really need to raise more awareness about. All right. Maternal COVID infections may affect newborn heart development. Are you pregnant right now? Well, if you have a COVID infection, your newborn child could be born with a heart problem. Yes, this is a thing. And Yes, this is another study that will make it to my COVID study archives. And you'll be able to go look at this there. There'll be a link. You'll just click on the link. It'll take you right up to this from uh, CIDRAP. And you can read this whole study. Yep, just another way to COVID virus. Just another way, one infection of the COVID virus, whether it be mild or severe, just goes on to really uh, change our lives, destroy our lives, and now even wreak havoc on future lives. All right, moving on to pollen. Tomorrow we will get an update from the UK, so no need to look at that today. National allergy map. There is just a little bit of orange in Texas, some yellow there as well. Also some yellow in Florida, green across the rest of the country. Taking a look at air qualities, and you're going to see it's pretty much a mixed bag. There's a cold front that is slicing through portions of the Ohio Valley and the Northeast. It's not a terribly strong cold front, but just ahead of that, there is some concerning air qualities. And of course, anywhere that's dealing with drought, which is a large majority of the United States, anywhere dealing with drought is fair game for wildfires. There have been wildfires in Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania had one back over the weekend. The West Coast is still dealing with problems. So yes, anywhere wildfires strike up at a moment's notice, your air quality could change and get bad. Want to learn more about the climate and weather? I did post a new video today. First off, here's my climate data report on X, also on Blue Sky as well. I did post a new video today over on my weather YouTube channel talking about drought, uh, record fall warmth. Yeah, I think some places are going to hit record highs on Halloween. I talked about a few other new stories as well. The Philippines had a tropical storm system. Yeah, that's the, talked about that as well. Want to see that weather video? It's about 15 minutes long. It's Climate Data Report on YouTube. Alrighty, taking a look at Philadelphia for yesterday. 826 EMS incidents were reported in my city yesterday. That's still over 800, and it seems to be the new normal 
that the majority of days stay over 800. Yeah, obviously, I'm not happy about that. Taking a look at Montgomery County, some good news here. Earlier, it was when I was getting ready to do that other video, uh, I was looking at this, it was really busy. Just down to seven calls now versus what I saw earlier, which was close to 20 calls in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Respiratory emergency is listed twice. We will get an update tomorrow. Reminder, we will get an update on Pennsylvania wastewater. So that's going to be interesting to look at. Hopefully things are going to be less busy when we look at Chester County in a moment. You may have just noticed there the preview as it refreshed. Yeah, there was actually a scroll bar there because there were so many problems, with a lot of them being heart problems. And take a look at this. Heart problems is still coming up twice. Sick person call is out there as well. And there's a bunch of calls for some other things at the moment. But again, not as busy as earlier. Both Montgomery and Chester County were extremely busy in the 3 o'clock hour and 4 o'clock hour as well. Taking a look at Canada, we can see the viral activity level for COVID-19 is moderate. Flu A is low. Flu B is not detected at this time. And the viral activity level for RSV is listed as moderate. All right, let's switch gears for a second. Let's go over to today's notes. And once again, reminding you, be aware of wildfire smoke. Anywhere that deals with wildfires, I told you, Connecticut had one. It was actually deadly. Someone actually died in the wildfire in Connecticut. And I believe that is contained as of now, but at any time, another one could strike up. So if you start smelling smoke, it's probably because there's a wildfire somewhere maybe within a couple hundred mile radius. The smoke can really travel hundreds of miles and that's going to damper air quality. So if you're someone that has breathing problems, please pay close attention because the next one to two weeks, uh, the threat of wildfire, it's just it going to exist for a large portion of the United States that is dealing with drought right now. All right, Florida for COVID cases, 471 new cases and two new deaths reported yesterday. New Jersey, 476 new cases and one death in their weekday update. New York had 418 new cases. Maryland, 404 new cases and seven new deaths. Maine reported uh, 323 new cases. Michigan adds 2,050 new cases and 42 new deaths, which as CJS, that's who provided this data in the comment section of my video, mentioned is the highest weekly reported total since the start of this, the summer wave, excepting that two-week update a few weeks back. There was a two-week update a few weeks back that was relatively high. Virginia adds 2,231 new positive tests and 17 new deaths, though not over the past three weeks. How about that? Very strange. Alrighty, let's uh, get back to Walgreens now. The national positivity rate at Walgreens was 16.2% for COVID. The prior week was 17%. Taking a look at just a couple states and taking a look at Missouri, 17.3% positivity rate with 24.4% uh, last week. That is down by 7%. Total test, 98 versus 123 Georgia, 19.8% positivity rate for COVID. And we can see here, that is definitely starting to rise. That is up by 6.5%. The prior week was 13.3%. And total tests, 217 versus 233. I would say that's probably a mixture of a rise in cases and dropping uh, testing at the same time. All right, I wanted to take a look at a few wastewater sites, and since we have not mentioned much of the West Coast, let's go out to the West Coast. Let's see what's going on in the southeast side of San Francisco. We do see that COVID at this time is listed as medium. RSV is up and coming. It's starting to rise. Influenza A is low at this time. Influenza B is listed as low. Norovirus is listed in the medium category at this time. And there have still been some MPOX clade 2 detections. Keyword, clade 2. Not the new clade uh, 1B. And now let's go somewhere else. We're going to do a few more wastewater sites. Let's, uh, let's continue our way southward. Can we take a look at San Diego? I want to know what's going on there. And we see San Diego. COVID is low. RSV, influenza A, influenza B, HMPV, all low at this time. Norovirus is still low. No new MPOX detection since about back in August. Let's go elsewhere in the United States now. Let's go up to, how about, 
we go over to Ohio and see what's going on in Akron, Ohio. In Akron, Ohio, look at this. COVID is listed in the medium category. It is dropping at this time. RSV is low, influence A, influence B, HMPV, all low at this time. Norovirus is still listed medium. Mpox. No detections of that at this time. So that's good to report. Now let's go down to the southern portions of the U.S. And let's take a look at Florida. How about we go over near St. Petersburg and see what's going on there. Northeast St. Petersburg. And for wastewater there for COVID, it is flat at this time. We can see RSV is low. Taking a look at influenza A, that is low at this time. Influenza B is low. And norovirus is in the medium category. But we can see here that it doesn't look like it's really rising yet. There is this wonky movement at the end. Pay no attention to that. That will correct. They almost always correct. And no issues with Mpox at this time. Alrighty, taking a look at epidemic status with COVID. And we can see here, it is not growing or likely growing anywhere in the United States. Some places, it's just not changing at all. There are many places where it's likely declining or is declining. So this is some good news. But within a few weeks, I think we're going to start to see more states go to not changing. And we'll start to see likely growing reappear in many states. Taking a look now at what is going on with the latest COVID variants. And we do note that the KP 3.1.1 variant still dominates at 57.2%. XCC is at 10.7% at this time. KP 2.3 is at 7.8%. LB.1, 5.8%. KP.3 at 5.7%. MC.1 is at 3.6%. KP.2, which is a variant from back in the summertime, is at 2%. And then you do have a whole bunch of other variants below that. All right, taking a look at what's going on in New Jersey, and I do need to refresh this. In New Jersey today, we will see that not much is changing uh, yet there. 68 out of 70 hospitals reported, and the number of hospitalizations is actually down slightly today. 250, six people on a ventilator at this time. So New Jersey is not doing all that bad. And in New York State, we also need to refresh this. The new number for New York State today is 395. And we can see here, though things are still dropping, if you follow the line, it looks like it's slowing down just a little bit. And the good news is, now that it is uh, slowing down, uh, we'll be starting off from a lower level of cases than we did last year. So that is a good thing for New York State. And that is... Pretty much the same case for a lot of states. All right, refreshing hospitalizations. We can see today 586 people are in the hospital in New York State and in the ICU, 65 at this time. Let's take a look at what's going on in New York City while we're at it as well. And we can see for New York City at this time, 125 people in the hospital and 19 people in the ICU. So even New York City, when the next wave does start, they're starting off on a really low level. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Wednesday edition of the virus update. We will have another virus update again tomorrow. Remember, you can follow me on X at COVID Data Report, and then you can also follow me on Blue Sky. I believe it's at Data Report there. I'll have the link to that down below. They're two different account names. And then, of course, my website, datareport.info. Maybe it is you are about to go to a doctor's appointment or something, and you've been having problems post-COVID. Check out the studies here. See if anything can relate to the issues you are having. And if so, present one of these studies to the doctor. You know, all you got to do is just click on COVID's effect on the lungs, for example. And click on any one of these. And just click on the link. And guess what? It takes you to a thread. And then it takes you to one of the studies. It is that easy to do some research on my site. I'm basically the archive of these viruses and that archive is only going to grow because more things are going to unravel and of course i'm going to find more of the past stuff that we have learned about since 2020 so if you're new to my channel give this a thumbs up subscribe down below hit that notification bell share this video with anyone you know and of course leave your comments down below once again that website is datareport.info and i will see you all again tomorrow tomorrow we'll have uk we may have Ohio if if I um, get.
get the video out after 2 o'clock, we'll definitely have Ohio, as long as they update, of course, you never know when a state's just not going to update, and who knows, we'll probably have other things as well. Until I see you again next time, stay safe everyone, have a fantastic Wednesday evening, and thanks for watching.